Oh, hi. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Pains. Kevin coming back to you this week. We're showing you some weapon effects that you can apply to really any large weapons. Some of the small weapons, but the smaller they get, they're a little bit more difficult to make the effects stick. So I'm showing you three different ways to do weapon effects today. I'm showing you an OSL plasma cannon effect. I'm showing you how to do it if you don't have an airbrush. And I'm, then I'm showing you a heat effect on a heavy bolter or any chain gun that you may come across. So check these out. See if they're useful to you. I think they add a definite pop to the models. So first we're coming through. This has just been primed black. Then we come through with Vallejo Metal Color Steel. All we're doing right now is picking out all of the silver components on this guy. Um, because I am working with this Vallejo Metal Color Steel, it is a little, eh, a little transparent. So I did have to apply two coats. But as you can see, it's going on so well. Super light brush pressure. That's why we chose this color over a lead belch or something like that. That way we don't have any brush strokes in our metallics. So since we're painting these plasma coils blue, we definitely want to come through with something a little bit brighter. So here we're coming through with Thousand Suns Blue. If we were doing red, we'd want to go something like Wild Rider Red. If we were doing green, we'd want to go with a Warp Stone Glow. So you want to go with a brighter color whenever you're selecting your plasma coils. To shade down our metallics, we're just coming through with no Oil Gloss typical workup for any metallics that we're going to do we start out with our base hue come through with the shade the reason why i like to use the gloss is it doesn't mat it down it makes it retain its shininess and look metallic without just matting it down or making it look a little bit out of place so nice full out of the pot coat here just covering the whole thing up nothing crazy to it at all now we're going to start working the magic. We come through with indigo ink. It doesn't really matter if you use an ink or a paint. You just want to go with a nice deep dark blue. So I've seen some people do it with McCrag blue. I've seen some people do it with the fang. The reason why I chose the ink is because it is semi-transparent and it'll help me keep a little bit of the blue underneath. For the next step up, we come through with white ink and indigo ink one to one. Again, you can do all of this with paints. You certainly do not have to use inks. So for this step, if you're using paints, you could come through with something around um, Calgar blue. You could go with uh, rust gray, depending on what kind of hue you want it to be. Again, we're just trying to keep a little bit of the transparency from the coat I laid down already. From there, we make a big jump. We go three to one white ink to indigo ink. Again, we're just trying to establish a tighter, tighter circle in the center of these plasma coils where the light is emanating from. So that's the entire purpose of this effect is you start out with a broad spectrum light everywhere. From there you go to a tighter circle of a brighter color and then another tighter circle of a brighter color. Finally we go to pure white ink. All we're doing is just putting a nice dot right in the middle on the top and the sides of it just to make that the brightest point the heaviest glow again you could use ceramite white in fact i might recommend that over the ink because these dull down whereas the ink, uh, paint would not so we got a little bit loose and crazy washed out some of our mid-tone we go back to that three to one white to indigo ink and just re-establish some of our intermittent colors that middle tone So that maybe took me five minutes to work up. If you've got your tank ready to go, you've got your guy ready to go, this is just a really quick and easy effect to really bump it up to the next step. So something to consider. As you see on the front of this guy, I did a plasma cannon with a, or a plasma bolter with a different style and it's just night and day difference. Um, if this were going to be 100% tied to this model, I would have done some OSL around the actual tank body but it's not. So let's move on to our next one. Here we're gonna show how to do it with just paint brushes. So we started out the same point. We got a wash down Vallejo Metal Color Steel, our Thousand Suns Blue. Now we're coming through with Lothar and Blue and we're just picking out the highest points of these coils. You are gonna to wanna to wash this thing after to try and tie all these colors in together. So don't worry, we come through after the fact, we wash it all down, it'll meld them together and it'll make these colors really just go. 
The biggest thing is just to make sure you're getting all the way around the plasma coils. You want to hit the tops, the sides, the bottom. You're just trying to outline what's already sculpted on this model. It's really super simple. Just work with a nice tip on your brush, grab you a triple zero, thin that paint down, start laying hay. Easy enough. So from there we switch to Fenrisian Gray. Here, you know, we've got a essentially a rectangle, right? With four corners, they're rounded off, but same concept. All we're trying to do is hit the outside edges of these four corners, trying to establish a little bit brighter color with Fenrisian Gray. So what we're gonna do is start there and we're gonna progressively lighten up that color. That way we can come through and have it look like the edges of these plasma coils are glowing. So just something for you to think about. You may hate the way I do this. Completely understandable. Everyone has their own way of doing it. I find this is one of the easiest ways to do it if you don't have access to an airbrush and you're wanting to create a good plasma effect. Now we're moving to Ceramite White and Fenrisian Gray 1 to 1. So all we're working with is a smaller highlight area here. We did maybe 60% of that entire rounded off edge before. Now we're coming through with about 20, 30% of that area and we're just working this highlight in. With this, I would definitely recommend blending your colors and mixing them together. That way you create a cohesive color that's going to take the highlight well. If you try and push it through on a different color, you may get a just wrong looking effect and it doesn't work out. Finally, we come through with Ceramite White on this guy, and we're just putting little dots on the most highest peak of these little rounded edges, just to make it look like it's brightest at the very, very tip tops. So, easy peasy, nothing high stress about it. So like I said before, we're going to have to come through and put a filter over all these colors to make sure they just blend together well. We took some Army Painter Blue Wash, you could definitely use Dragon Hall Nightshade, and all we're doing is thinning it down and putting a filter over this. We're not necessarily worried about putting a wash in the recesses of the actual plasma coils. This is more so just to put a nice filter over it and make these things look like the colors blend real well. So this is a way to do it. It works great if you don't have access to an airbrush. However, I bought my airbrush three years ago, full kit for 120 bucks. It was a uh, masterclass on, on Amazon, super, super cheap. And it has worked like a damn champ for me for the last three years. So return on investment on airbrushes and airbrush kits, even if they're the cheap ones, pay off in dividends. So definitely consider it. You don't have to get an Iwata for a buck 50, all of that. So this is the final thing we're working up show y'all today. We're doing a heavy bolter here or whatever they call these, I'm not sure. We got it painted with a nice silver color to start out with and then we come through with a gold ink. You could definitely use any other gold you got. Retributor Armor works great, um, but I'm using a gold ink because honestly I bought it and wanted to try it. So on top of our gold, we come through with Vallejo Brilliant Ink. All we're doing is working a smaller section of what we already laid down with the gold. So we start out at 50% with the gold, we go to this brilliant red ink, we go to about 20%. I haven't found a good GW equivalent paint to do this with. I've usually used Minotaur's Nebula Red. We're trying this ink out and it creates a really good effect. So get outside of your wheelhouse, try your different paints out because GW is great, but GW is not perfect, okay? Between this and the next step, we went with a nice dark deep blue. So you can see where we started out with the Nautilus blue, you can use McCrag blue, and then we just work even smaller to a black. We're just trying to create that little bit of carbon buildup on the end, trying to create the effect that it's got burnt gunpowder on the end of this barrel, okay? Easy five minutes worth of work. So I'm going to rapid fire through all three of these, show them to you, let you see what they look like, see if this is something that could work for you. I think these are great little additions you can do to these models. Limited amount of work, not too much time sunk into it, and it creates a really good effect in the end, okay? So, dealer's choice. If you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, awesome. It's your models, paint it how you want to paint it, okay? But for the amount of work, good to go all day long. So again, guys, thanks for checking me out week after week. We're checking, we're trying different stuff out on the channel, trying to show you all different things that Maybe y'all can find useful. Maybe y'all can find just a way to use this in your models. Give me some ideas, guys. If y'all have something y'all want to see done, put it down in the comment section below. Let me know what y'all want to see. We'll try and get it done for you. 
So if you saw something you liked in this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video to a friend. Maybe he can take use of it, okay? So appreciate y'all checking me out week after week. We'll see y'all next time. Bye for now.